Hello, and welcome to this session on Operational Analytics with AWS, with a special focus on Amazon Elasticsearch Service. I hope you have been having a great time at AWS Summit. My name is Muthu Pichemani, and I am an Analytics Specialist Solution Architect working with Amazon Elasticsearch Service. In this session, we'll talk about a few things related to operational analytics. What is it? Why we need it? and how you can employ Amazon Elasticsearch to successfully implement an analytics application for your business. I will go over two popular patterns that will help realize this goal together with some choice of tools available to you. I will also cover some basic aspects of Elasticsearch and how it works for this purpose. I will also discuss about what is OpenSearch and its relationship to Elasticsearch. Operational analytics is a field that was born out of traditional analysis and research which were originally used in manufacturing and military to aid in intelligent decision making for better outcomes. So what is it? Quite simply, it is a, process, it is a set of processes to improve business efficiency to either increase profit or reduce cost. Or it can be to improve customer experience or increase business value to them. Traditionally, analytics dealt with data processing using batch systems that informs decision making. The process stopped when this information was delivered. There was a human element involved, but operational analytics is a bit different in that it is more automated without a human element being present. It has a flexible granularity to help with both strategic and tactical decision making. It starts with describing and summarizing what has happened in the past, which is popularly known as descriptive analytics. This gives rise to techniques and data based data based ways to predict what is going on going to happen in the future, which is called predictive analytics. Continuous application of this descriptive and predictive analytics helps determining the actions that make future happen the way you want it. This is what is called as prescriptive analytics. Any operational analytics system must have certain fundamental characteristic. First is discoverability. It is the ability of a system to identify what types of data resides in an organization and where do they reside. This helps in providing consistent delivery and access to the data. This is quite important for the rest of the analytic application because without it, no other operation or analysis on the data would be possible. So identifying this data is very important. Next is the ability to make it possible to infer the internal state of the system using the signal output available from this disparate data, which is what is called as observability. And the last characteristic is that these processes should focus on applications and the problem they are trying to solve and solve it in such a way that it is easy, easily consumable by both humans and the rest of the processes. So the first step to is the first step is to identify what and where are these data coming from. With modern enterprise IT systems, the vast majority of this data comes from machines with a small fraction from humans. In the last decade and a half, we saw an exponential growth of this machine-generated data. The volume of the machine-generated data is exploding. A major source of this data is user applications. These applications can be your back-end monolithic services, microservices, or other business and web applications. Any meaningful application generates a large amount of data as it operates. Next is, it, next is IT DevOps and your infrastructure components like networking elements, load balancers, databases, and shared services. Just like the applications, they spit out a lot of data during their normal course of operation. With the, with the advent of IoT, we have data being generated by numerous sensors and other devices be it in a large manufacturing facility or in a smart home with a lot of companion devices. This wealth of data invariably contains hidden information. 
they have never been more critical to the missions of the enterprises they serve. They form a rich source for gaining operational insights, which is a central focus of all operational analytics. Let's look at some sample insight this data can help gain. Operational data coming from applications can help gain insight into how your application is performing. This helps answer questions like, is my application or infrastructure working correctly? What are my latency and error rates for my application? And what is the cause of my application issues? These kinds of insight is very vital to important enterprise functions like security operations, which helps answer questions like, are there any suspicious activity going on? Where do they originate from and the like? Recent large scale security events happening in large enterprises only underscores the need for gaining such valuable insights. Operational data informs business decision making too, like how we saw it in the earlier session. They help questions like what products are popular, which features are going to get the most attention, and which set of users are most, most active and so on. But in order to gain these effective insights and make them actionable, one needs to ensure there are proper tools employed. Traditional services and tools are not very well amenable to infer these operational insights. For example, if you have traditional database, you will often hit scaling limits as they have only finite resources. Data warehouses scale horizontally but lack indices, which aid in quick search and interactive explanation. Manual searching of these data as text files are possible but they are only limited by the skills of the user. So traditional analytics tools are simply not built to handle veracity of modern day operational data. And that is where Elasticsearch comes in and it is a great tool for operational analytics. We saw earlier that an operational analytics application need to ingest data from disparate sources. Elasticsearch can handle high volume of data at very high ingestion rates. The ingested data almost always have disparate structure. Elasticsearch has the ability to handle these varying data structures. Unlike traditional database systems, Elasticsearch does not have normal scalability limitation. It can scale both horizontally and vertically to meet your and your users needs. Elasticsearch has a rich ecosystem of tools to help with various stages of data pipeline like ingestion, buffering, data collection, and visualization. These properties of Elasticsearch makes it a natural choice for collecting, storing, aggregating, and searching operational analytics data. We saw how discoverability of data is an important function of an operational analytics system and we also saw the wealth of data being generated by machine at different parts of application infrastructure. So what exactly are these type of data? Broadly speaking, these types of data are logs, traces, metric, and metadata like event, alarm, and security data. Log data is usually stamped discrete events that are emitted during the normal course of operations of various system we saw earlier. Trace data refers to data pertaining to single user or application request as it transits through various parts of the system. And the metric data refers to measured value of state of certain aspects of system that normally serve as performance indicator. Event alarm data refers to higher granular data with specific business meaning, like for example, those corresponding to security incidents. These data form fundamental building block for operational analytics and for which Elasticsearch is really suited. In the last section, we saw how Elasticsearch is naturally suited for operational analytics. In this section, let's step back a little and talk about what is Elasticsearch and what it can do and how it works. Elasticsearch at its core is a widely popular full text search engine. While it is ranked in top 10 database systems in the last many years, it is also a top ranked search engine. It is an open source software and is built from, built 
from ground up to be highly available, distributed and scalable search solution. Although it finds in use in many different applications, search and operational analytics are by far the most popular use cases. Many companies find it attractive not just because they like open source, but also because companies can realize value of the investment very quickly with Elasticsearch. So what can Elasticsearch do? First is, of course, it helps you search your data. This is what is called as text search, where you can send in a query in natural language and Elasticsearch sifts, searches, and brings back relevant results, which is its core search function. The second and a more recent form of search is what I would like to call as similarity search. It involves internally encoding your queries and your data as an array of numbers, more formally called vectors, that find similarity between your query and your data that is beyond simple text matching. This enables one to search data that is strictly not textual. This finds applications in many areas like image searching and recommendations. Another important characteristic of Elasticsearch is its ability to ingest data which could be streaming at a very high rate and make it available for search almost immediately. This is highly helpful in ingesting and searching operational analytics data. One of the probably lesser known facts about Elasticsearch is that it is a powerful analytics engine too like how it can be used for operational analytics. Using what is called aggregation, it can perform wide range of summarizations, patterns, and trend at scale. Elasticsearch has these powerful capabilities, but it is often non-trivial to set up a large-scale cluster, optimize for peak performance, operate, and maintain it. This is where managed offerings for Elasticsearch comes in really handy. Amazon Elasticsearch service is a fully managed service that makes it easy to deploy, manage, scale Elasticsearch and Kibana. Let's look at some of the benefits of uh, Amazon Elasticsearch. Amazon Elasticsearch's service is fully managed. You can deploy your Elasticsearch cluster in minutes. The service simplifies management tasks such as hardware provisioning, software installation, and patching a failure recovery, backups, and monitoring. To monitor a cluster, Amazon Elasticsearch service includes built-in event monitoring and alerting so, so that you can get notified on changes to your data to proactively address any issues. Amazon Elasticsearch service is flexible and you can capture, retain, correlate, and analyze all of your data. It delivers easy-to-use APIs and real-time capabilities of Elasticsearch. Amazon Elasticsearch is cost effective. The service include various features uh, like ultra warm or online cold tier storage to name a few to offer cost reduction up to 90% of your storage costs in your hot tier. As a fully managed service, Amazon Elasticsearch service provides advanced features without adding any licensing fees and further lowering your cost of ownership by eliminating a need for a dedicated Elasticsearch expert to manage your clusters. Of course, for any business, security is critical. Amazon Elasticsearch takes care of all your security patches, offers network isolation via VPC, fine-grained access control, multi-tenant Kibana support. Your data is encrypted at rest using keys you create and controlled through AWS Key Management Service. The node-to-node -node encryption capability provides an additional layer of security by, improve, uh, by implementing TLS for all communication between Elasticsearch instances in the cluster. Amazon Elasticsearch service is also HIPAA eligible and compliant with programs like PCI, ISO, FedRAMPs, and so on. FedRAMP standards especially help you to meet industry-specific or regulatory requirements. Amazon Elasticsearch cluster is highly scalable and available. It lets you store up to three petabytes of data in a single cluster. With cross-cluster search, you can federate your queries up to 20 clusters, enabling you to search and analyze all of your analytic data via a single Kibana interface. It is designed to be highly reliable using multi-AZ deployments. 
which allows you to replicate data between the ACs in the same region. You can easily resize your cluster with a few clicks of single API call. Amazon Elasticsearch service natively in integrates with different Amazon Elast uh, AWS services like Kinesis, Lambda, CloudWatch, and other third-party tools. On the Inches side, you can easily send CloudWatch logs to Amazon ES. You can use Kinesis Data Firehose or MSK to stream data to Amazon Elasticsearch. We also offer integrations with other services like IoT, as which I mentioned earlier. Now let's take a look at how Elasticsearch works. The flow of data to and from Elasticsearch cluster looks like this. Sources of operational data write their data into Elasticsearch cluster. These data are in the form of JSON and are sent to Elasticsearch through its REST interface. Elasticsearch then indexes this data, which is a process of creation of structures called reverse indices. This enables mapping of search terms to documents containing those terms. Elasticsearch by default indexes all fields in the data, including the ones that are nested or those that have a relationship with other documents. These indices are searched by application users, analysts, or security ops personnel in the form of search queries, again by using REST interface. The storing of data in the indices are central to all operations with Elasticsearch. The indices themselves are comprised of structures called shards. Elasticsearch is built upon Lucene, an open source indexing library. Elasticsearch shards are nothing but standalone Lucene indices. Each shard is made up of many segments. Once created, these Lucene segments are immutable. Any update to data present in these shards are handled as deletion of already existing data and creation of new data with the changes needed. Elasticsearch performs housekeeping operations called merge, during which the deleted data is truly purged from the system. On creation of an index, Elasticsearch creates configurable number of these shards. New version of software provides special ways to alter the number of these shards after creation. A shard can be a primary or a replica shard. The replicas are exact copies of primary shards that are created for the purpose of increasing the availability. That is, if ever a primary shard lost, is lost for various reasons, the system can still function by promoting a replica shard as a primary. Elasticsearch then copies to balance for the correct number of required primary and replica shards. The replica shards are also helpful for helping with multiple simultaneous requests when Elasticsearch leverages the replica shards for servicing this request. The number of replicas in the system is dynamic and can be changed at any time. The shards in the system, both primary and replica, are then distributed to the nodes on the system. Elasticsearch does its best to make the distribution of these shards as uniform as possible onto the data nodes to avoid issues like shard skew by taking into account various factors. The placement of shards on this node is called shard allocation. The shard allocation algorithm within Elasticsearch and specifically Amazon Elasticsearch service is very sophisticated and considers many factors. The allocation of shards to the nodes together with some other data comprise the state of the cluster. There are nodes called the leader nodes in the cluster that are responsible for keeping the cluster state up to date and available to all nodes. Once allocated, the shards are then ready to service queries and updates coming to the cluster. The Elasticsearch by default does not account for size of the shard during allocation, but only the number of the shards. So special care must be taken to keep the shard sizes uniform and its size recommended as best practice. Operational data as discussed in the earlier section will contain disparate data in various forms. The different types of data really forms multiple data streams within Elasticsearch cluster and are typically stored as different indices. In the example shown here, the syslog streams comes from the system log data, while the app metric stream comes from application metric data. The shards of the different indices are then placed on the nodes as per the allocation discussed in the last slide. The number and the allocation of these shards 
then forms the basis and directly influences all operations including scaling within Elasticsearch. Operational data generally grows as analytics process matures and as business add more sources of data. So scaling is an important function for operational analytics. Achieving a right scale is an iterative process. That is, when the cluster is provisioned, a specific configuration is chosen in terms of instant types, the number of those instances, storage required, etc. Then one needs to closely monitor the cluster for various metrics. Within Amazon Elasticsearch service, these metrics are made available through Amazon CloudWatch. There are also additional advanced metrics available via APIs for CPUs, JVM, storage queues, storage queues, and nodes. These then give indication as to when the cluster must be reconfigured for scale as you run your analytics workload and applications. This process can be repeated as the size of your operational data grows. In this section, we look at overall flow of operational data from when it is produced to when it is ready for analysis. Uh, first, operational data is produced from various sources as we have seen in previous sections. The next step is to collect and buffer this data which serves two purposes. First is to provide a form of decoupling between the sources and the next stage of pipeline including Amazon Elasticsearch. And the second is to provide a way to bifurcate data to be returned to S3. Writing data centrally to S3 makes passing the data to downstream analytics like EMR, Athena, and Redshift really easy. The transform and delivery stage then takes the data from the buffer, performs enrichment or other necessary transformations, and handles the delivery of data to Amazon Elasticsearch service. Once the data is on Elasticsearch, it becomes available for search and analytics exploration in near real time. The data is then used for various operations like analysis and aggregations, reporting and sending out alerts to external systems. It is possible to use S3 as a collector and buffer here, as described in the next section. First is the Amazon S3 event notification approach. This approach makes S3 as a collector for operational data. The flow of configuration action and the data is as follows. First, a bucket and a folder is created in Amazon S3. Event notification are then, are then configured within S3 to push data events to SQS. With this configuration, the collection pipeline is now ready to receive operational data from the producers. Producers drops files onto Amazon S3 as object. This is the collection function of data pipeline. There are various options for collect and write operation. One of them is Logstash, the other one is FluentD, either of which can be configured with an output plugin writing to S3. Other data like VPC flow logs, ELB logs, Amazon CloudWatch logs can be directly configured to write to this S3 bucket. SQS provides the buffering between the source and AWS Lambda, which behaves as an aggregator of this operation data. As the data lands on S3, Notifications are generated containing a bucket and a key name. AWS Lambda then reads the object using bucket and key name and writes the corresponding data to Amazon ES using bulk API. For these lambdas, one can select VPC option and Amazon SQS as the event source. Amazon Elasticsearch VPT, VPC endpoints appears as ENIs within the VPCs where these services reside. The next approach is through Amazon Kinesis using data streams which functions as buffer. Producers then place records in a batch onto these collectors. Collectors could be Logstash or FluentD or Amazon Kinesis producer library or Amazon Kinesis agent. Lambda performs the role of an aggregator by selecting a VPC option and setting Amazon Kinesis as an event source. AWS Lambda then pulls the data from the stream based on batch size and writes to Amazon ES as a bulk KPI. Again, Amazon Elasticsearch VPC endpoints appears as ENIs within the VPCs where these services are running. Now let's look at some of the options for uh, the collectors. 
we have AWS native agent-based collectors or open source collectors, which are agent-based or JVM-based. Two popular options for AWS native agent-based systems are Amazon CloudWatch agent and Kinesis agent. And agent-based open source tools include FluentBit and FluentD, which are really popular in the container world and also popular in uh, running applications on normal EC2 systems. The JVM-based collectors include Logstash and Flumes, which are very popularly seen across a quite a wide variety of applications. There are a few options for uh, buffers as well, which are popularly preferred, and they fall into two categories as AWS Native or Open Source or AWS Service. Under AWS Natives, I will probably not go into each one of them, but we have all the services uh, from Amazon SQS, CloudWatch, Kinesis Data Firehose, and so on, including S3. On the open source AWS service, we have Apache Kafka, Redis, RabbitMQ, and Amazon's managed streaming for Apache Kafka and Elastic Cache for Redis as options. The aggregators, uh, this shows the popular options for aggregators, which include AWS Lambda, FluentD, and Logstash. Many tools like FluentD and Logstash perform this multiple role of collectors and aggregators too, and are very rich in providing transformation capabilities for transforming data before they arrive on Elasticsearch. Now I'll discuss about the relationship between OpenSearch and Amazon Elasticsearch. OpenSearch is a community-driven open source search and analytics suite derived from Apache 2 licensed Elasticsearch, which is coming off of Elasticsearch 7.10.2 to be precise. The open source project consists of a distributed search engine powered by Apache Lucene called OpenSearch and the data visualization and user interface which we all know as Kibana is going to be called OpenSearch Dashboard. OpenSearch also include all of the advanced enterprise function ported over from OpenDistro for Elasticsearch. OpenSearch supports on Amazon Elasticsearch service and rebranding of Amazon Elasticsearch service to Amazon Open Source service is coming soon. This slide shows you additional resources available within AWS training and certification and other workshops that you'd like to pursue. Thank you.